Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back in to some more bite-sized business advice. We are going to just totally revolutionize your approach to business today because we're not really going to talk about business. So we are going to talk about the other pieces of this show that is mind, body, spirit, the stuff that you need to master in order to grow a business. But we have a conversation outside of the realm of business today. We'll tie it all back. Don't worry. But I have a special guest with me today. We're going to rewrite and rewire your brain a little bit in 15 minutes. You game for that? I am. Let's do it. I have a special guest, Dr. Ravi Iyer. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ravi. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for having me, Brandon. I, I was a little late coming in, but I think we're going to have a great conversation. That's okay. You're right on time to the person listening. So we are, we're just going to get right to it. And I'm curious, I, I made the promise that we're going to rewrite people's brains and their, the narrative that they experienced their life through today. It's a unique conversation for this show, but I'm excited for it because I, I think it's very important in the context of running and growing a business. So explain for me uh, and, and for the audience, what is it that you do? I do. I'm a physician and uh, the business of a physician is to impact people's lives. Uh, for 41 years, I've been a physician helping people transform the way they live, sometimes by changing the chemistry of their body, sometimes I change the chemistry of their mind. <clears throat> Regardless, what I found during the pandemic was that we were, in my clinic, we were exceptionally good at shifting the conversation of people around us. And by shifting the conversation, we were able to help them survive and not only survive, but they helped them thrive during the pandemic. And by that, I mean not just the patients who came to us, but also the entire community around us of about almost 100,000 individuals in our community. And all of them, including the small businesses around our clinic, borrowed and learned from us and were able to keep their uh, businesses open and if you are the only business open in a world where all businesses were shut down you can just imagine the profitable profitability that you'll have so it was a windfall for all the people in my community to survive thrive and be functional during a pandemic when the rest of the world was shut down or were the losing their minds and the way we did it was i showed them how to shift their narrative and when I started, when by the end of the pandemic, it became clear to me that if I could do that for people on a one-on-one -on -one basis or a one-to-few basis, I needed to take this entire message to a one-to-many because I saw that the fundamental problem of productivity, fundamental product problem of having a successful life, of having a joyful, impactful life was the way you saw yourself as life impacted you and what and i realized during the pandemic that what the reason why we were so good was we were able to shift the way people experience their life by that everyone thinks that i shifted the experience no i did not shift the experience it was the same virus it was the same fear but i shifted the way they experienced the fear and I suddenly realized that when a surgeon does an operation, what the anesthesiologist does is he doesn't remove pain. He only blocks your ability to experience pain. The knife still cuts you and you feel pain when you're able to, when the anesthetic wears off. But during the period of surgery, your experience of pain is shifted. So the, your narrative of pain is shifted. And therefore, your entire ability to go through surgery is shifted. So I asked myself the question, since I, since I was doing the same thing here, what if I could do it for 
whole groups of people. So the first thing was I wrote a book on it, on the pandemic and how we did it. And then we I started coming on podcasts and describing it to people. And then now I run a, um, a workshop for corporations and for healthcare teams and uh, enabling them to shift the thinking of their teams such that they produce dramatic impacts in the way their teams function under all kinds of challenges. Yeah, this is, I think this is fascinating because, so that was obviously a very traumatic period for the whole world. We can all relate to, to COVID and pandemic. Um, but now on the backside of that, we we have the opportunity to improve and learn and do, do life and business differently in a better way, which I think you're you're cracking the code on, so to speak. So I've heard the phrase, um, your reality is really just your perception. So you, your perception is your reality, meaning the way you perceive your life, the way you think things are happening to you or for you is true for you, regardless of how the external world sees that. Is that kind of the conversation here when you're saying shift the narrative or, or, or what's the difference between what you're talking about and that statement? So, reality is entirely your perception. The reason why we all seem to have the same shared reality is because the tools by which you perceive and the tools by which I perceive are the same. So, you have the same eye and retina that I have in my eye. And your retina responds to the same spectrum wavelength as my spectrum. Your skin has the same pressure receptors as my skin. Your nose has the same olfactory nerves as mine. Your tongue has the same taste buds as mine. Now, so broadly speaking, you and I have the same sensory tools. In But... Like the way that two cars are both cars, but one can be a Lamborghini and another can be a Prius. We have slight variations in the range of sensitivity of our senses, but regardless, we are still having two cars capable of 65 miles per hour speed down a highway and so on and so forth. Now, the truth is, because of this, you and I have the illusion that we have the same reality simply because we see the impacts of our environment the same way. But a bumblebee does not see the same reality as you. A bumblebee sees things ultraviolet. So a, a snake has a different uh, reality and an earthworm has a different reality an amoeba has a different reality so there are as many worlds or realities as there are sentient organs available in the world so it is not just one universe we all occupy we occupy multiple universes at the same time having said that let's take a step back during the time of Christopher Columbus, the common narrative or perception was that the world was flat. And it was flat. It was flat for the way the entire Western world conducted its naval and trade operations. All right. So their reality, the way they lived it was flat. The reality during COVID was that the vaccine kills people. That was the story. And people behaved like that. People behaved in various... The only problem was during the pandemic, there were multiple different conflicting stories and each person lived their life according to their stories and paid the consequences of living their life according to those stories. Now, let's step away from the pandemic. Let's step back into the world of business. Businesses every day live their life to face certain challenges. Some of the challenges are existential. Some of the challenges are not so existential. But regardless, each of these challenges are stories that exist in their heads. 
you have teams you have subordinates uh, saying that such and such boss is an abusive boss or uh, or a manipulative person you have people living their life as if an opportunity will go away if they don't grab it right now if they don't if they if they will not get a chance to get it again all these are narratives they are belief structures and they are constructs and the constructs happen when the when whatever situation whatever real impact on their five senses created the situation to trigger the arising of a particular construct in their head all right where did all this occur go back to the life of a 7 year old kid he finds a stick on the ground for the first time for a 7 year old kid the stick is a wondrous thing because he has not yet made his narrative or constructs around sticks so he thinks that the stick can be a sword it can be a spear it can be a pole it can be so many different things and for him a stick is a source of immense surprise and joy because it has so many possibilities then somewhere along the way he decides that the stick is now a sword and from that moment onwards every stick can only be a sword for him so like that what we begin our lives with no constructs and then we build a construct and once we arrive at one construct that construct becomes one more brick in the wall to say to to paraphrase pink floyd you know it so that becomes a brick in our wall and in this way we construct our prison of constructs and then the world begins to show itself up to us only in within those constructs so the construct for a republican is xyz the construct for a de- democrat is xy you know is something else and like that it goes on and on and on yeah Now, so yeah, I mean, you can see how dangerous this gets it just following that path you were going because you absolutely. you start to that, it is the danger that. that's it is these kind of constructs that cost women yeah. to get burnt on the stake in salem yeah it is this same construct that causes gaza strip and the hamas problem it is this kind of constructs that causes ukraine and russia it is this kind of construct that causes wall street crashes you know everything is construct based so my thing was i found a way of teaching people how to separate stand in the space because most of the time we are so unconscious that our constructs come up too close they are so close to the experience that they the construct appears like the reality it is like a magician's poof you know and and who the rabbit comes out of the hat so what i'm trying to say is what if you found a way to remain conscious enough to the process that you are able to get this much space between reality as it occurs and construct development i call the development of constructs the eye of the sensory cyclone of life and these narratives are spinning around you and you are you are able to stand in the eye of the storm and and that i in that space you suddenly see these constructs going and you can decide which construct you want to play with today this is this is amazing and that's that's so powerful to be able to just choose the narrative you're going to step into but not only that just be yes. really narrative agnostic if you will and and separate yourself from your beliefs Correct. and, and Correct. your constructs so in we have like 5 minutes ish left in this episode can you start to peel back the layers and uh while you're doing this I'm going to put your website on the screen for the viewers and listeners it'll be in the show notes down below so you can go check out Dr. Ravi Smore um and get some further insights on this but can you help me understand how do we take that first step separate ourselves from our constructs from our narratives so we can step into this ultimate power of choosing the way we see it and interact with our reality 
Well, people have been doing this since time immemorial, from Jesus Christ and Buddha and things like that. The problem is that they used different tools to try to grab you. So one of the things you do is you try to grab onto a single narrative, what I call a grounding narrative. When you hold on to that hard enough and firmly enough, you have a little bit of anchor that prevents you from being spun around by 20 different constructs. So, for example, sitting in a, in a uh, Gre- uh, chanting a Gregorian chant like the monks used to do is a way of narrowing down your constructs to one. All right. Uh, holding a, 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 a sp- doing a rosary is one way of doing it. But the practical way is no matter which way you do it, you uh, have to focus down to one construct, one narrative. Uh, athletes do this all the time. If they prepare themselves when they're getting on stage. They, they, they practice a routine. And in that routine, it is a, it's a repetitive same routine that they hold on to. And that focuses them down to, so that they become present to the reality rather than spinning in their heads. So... One very powerful way is to watch the tide of your breathing as it goes on and on. So initially you start by taking a dedicated space and time away from the rest of the world and you practice breath watching and it's mindful awareness. But later on you become so skilled that you can do it in the middle of work. While you're doing it, you're watching your breath. So then you can sense yourself as being being an observer of life as it presents to you. And in that space, when you are in that observer space, you don't get triggered. You don't get, you don't, you don't re- respond immediately. You get a tiny, it, 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 you just need three seconds, three seconds of space between event and response. If you can get three seconds of space, you can rule the world. Mm. There's no greater sales pitch, I think, than that one. <laughs> um, yes. But what I, I think what I'm hearing you say is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're operating on, by default, really on a subconscious level. We're allowing ourselves to be triggered. When we become more present and aware of how we're reacting, it's really just a, a conversation of, of being present and choosing not to let our subconscious take over. Am I, am I right with that? Absolutely. When people say be in the now, be present, they are talking about being creating that three second space. Mm. The problem is as long as you're just talking about being in the now, you're never in the now. Example, right now, I want you to tell me, describe being in the now. Right now. I'm, I I'm gonna click that. that. I'm I don't, gonna I don't click know if you can do that. I, thank you. You can't because when I click my finger, now is gone. It's it is gone. Yeah. Gone. 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 So each time. So being in the now is not as remember something. Every description you have, everything that you describe through language is always past based. Mm-hmm. You cannot you cannot describe something to somebody while being present to it. You have to step away from being present to it to even talk about it. So being present is just being intensely focused and silent. You can't communicate with people when you are being present. But you radiate, you radiate connection in that moment. A person who is totally present is magnetic in their stance. People around him will come to him and flock to him just to be silent next to him because in their in his presence they experience grounding just by being around that person wow that's that's crazy i i, I have to say you know this this episode definitely stretched my mind um made made me think i hope you the listener too this just totally got you out of the box of where you were when we started the episode and uh dr ravi i think you over delivered for us so i Appreciate you coming on. And uh, we have your website on the screen. It's in the show notes down below, dreyer.com. Is there a way we can find more of you describing this and talking about it so we can I, elevate I can, our consciousness? I conduct a workshop for people that uh, you can enroll in uh, uh, f- for uh, uh, 
it's called the art of living leadership and uh, it is about creating um, finding the methodology and the expertise to create that three second of space that's all you need three seconds of space if you could go through life with three seconds of space between the time life presents to you and the time you respond to it you will have you would have opened the treasures of the world for yourself amazing the title of this show is now three seconds to rule the world maybe we'll get banned on social media platforms that's okay we're going to try it out dr ravi thank you so much for being here this was a phenomenal episode thank you for those of you listening watching wherever you are make sure you subscribe we have five-star guests like dr ravi every single weekday and you don't want to miss a second there is no better way to get you out of the box that your mind is in and help you grow your business on a daily basis than subscribing to this very show right here yes that was very arrogant but that's okay we love having you we put on this show for listeners like you we'll see you on the next one